What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon EDC, and in this video I'm checking out the Notorious EDC Kingpin. And this is the first knife from Notorious EDC and the designer Tom. But you may be more familiar with them from the Beer Bomb, which I don't actually have one, but this is a patch of it. They're obviously going to be bigger than this and metal, but mostly pocket art. It has some functionality in the way of a pry capabilities on the tail some bottle opener on the mouth and a bit driver in the eye but they're very elusive very hard to get released in limited stock i'd like to get one at some point but just have had no luck on the drops i've been trying for over a year so may eventually cave and get one on the secondary but so far still trying to secure one through normal drops I've also done a review of the Notorious EDC All Good pouch. This came out last year, one of the cooler pouches to release last year. I got mine in orange, I have a black one on the way from his pre-order as well. These are somewhat hard to get, but because he did a pre-order, you were able to order for a week. There was no limit or cap on how many you would make. You just wanted, if you wanted one, pre-order one. It's closed now, but made it a lot more easy to secure one of these and have a ton of patch real estate. If you're interested in the pouch itself, check out my review on it, but the pre-order is closed. Hopefully I'll do more in future colorways of those though, because it was really nice not having to worry about snagging one in a drop. Now the knife itself, he went with a modern traditional, which is interesting design for a first knife. I got mine in the blacked out version with the black micarta, black PVD coated bolster, and the black PVD coated blade. But there were four variations that released. This was the most expensive of the four at $295. The cheapest was the all titanium version with the stone wash blade at $280. And right in between at $290, you had two micarta handles, uncoated titanium bolster, and a satin finished blade at $290. So not a huge price variation enough that you could just choose the one you like to not really worry about the price difference. But I went with the blacked out version, which I think looks really good. All four came with a leather slip and not sure who made it. It has Notorious stamped into the leather and just a really nice look overall. It does not have a pocket clip, so I'm probably gonna have one made or order one that does have a pocket clip. But overall, the one that it comes with is really, really nice and has been working so far. Just kind of want to try one out with a pocket clip. I'm not a pocket clip on my knife type person, but on my slip, I think it would be kind of nice to have it in the same place in your pocket at all times. So going to try that out. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the specs and then I'll get more into the review of it. But to bury the lead, I really have been impressed with this. Love it. I ordered it because I don't get a lot of traditional knives and wanted to try one out and really fell in love with this one. But it is a slip joint. Nail nick opening, although it's got kind of a longer, fuller size nail nick, and so a lot more access to that. It has a nice pull. I'm not into traditional knives enough to say kind of what the pull weight is or the walk and talk, but it feels really good. It has a nice half stop there and just feels really, really smooth, which isn't a surprise because this was OEM'd by Riot, who's definitely one of the most trusted, if not the most trusted OEM in the business, in the knife business, and so really, really well done. Minimal kind of branding or billboarding on it. You have the N here on the blade. And then inside of the backspacer here, you do have Notorious. I'm not sure how well that's gonna pick up on camera, but it does say Notorious inside, but you can't really see it when it's closed or you really don't notice it at all unless you're specifically looking for it. Now, this is also gonna be legal in almost everywhere that has strict knife laws. It's non-locking and 2.91 inches on the blade and even less cutting edge, 2.71 inches. Most places that have knife limit length limits aren't gonna measure the cutting edge though. They're gonna measure the entire blade. And even then it's at 2.91 inches. All kind of premium materials. We obviously have the micarta on three of the four versions, but underneath that you have titanium. This one is PBD coated titanium. And then the blade is Bowler M390. And so obviously this one's coated as well. The other three are not. But all kind of premium materials throughout. And it feels like a premium knife, which is really nice. The blade style is going to be a harpoon style blade. Nice hollow grind on it. It's very both pokey but slicey as well. It came super sharp out of the box and the action on it, it's for kind of a slip joint, really, really smooth and satisfying to open and close. It is a two-handed opener though, of course. 
Handle length on this is 3.7 inches, which allows me to get a nice four finger grip. It's relatively thin, so very comfortable grip, no hot spots, no pocket clip to get in the way there. Making it a really nice ambidextrous knife as well as most kind of traditional knives are. Four, uh, 0.43 inches thick, so relatively thin. Overall length on this is gonna be 6.5 inches, and the weight is 2.2 ounces. So now that we got all of that out of the way, I'm going to kind of compare it to another knife that isn't really similar, <clears throat> but has kind of a similar origin story, and that's the Pete's Pirate Knife folder. And so as you can see, they're not similar. One's a flipper with a frame lock. It's bigger, bulkier, different shaped blade, both kind of a drop point. This one's more of a harpoon, but it's still kind of a drop point style blade but not really similar at all. And the reason I'm gonna compare them is, like I said, the origin story. Both the designers on here, Pete and Tom, have kind of a photography background and they make products that are extremely hyped, whether that's by them or their fans are hyped and they sell out very quickly. And this is a first design from them. And so even though the knives aren't similar, the kind of backstory is, and they kind of handle them very differently. And I think, for me, although I did a video on the Peach Pirate Knife and it was overall positive and my thoughts on it are still positive, I like the knife. I, <clears throat> excuse me, the Notorious EDC Kingpin for me is better in almost every aspect and I think handled the launch significantly better for their first knife. And so I'm gonna talk about First, the OEM. So Pete's Pirate Knife went with Big Eye Designs, who is makes a lot of different EDC gear and overall is a good OEM, but it's also their first knife. So it was the first knife for the OEM. No, <clears throat> excuse me, the Kingpin went with Riot, which is, I already mentioned, one of the most trusted OEMs in the business and you know exactly what you're getting from them. And so, for a first knife, it makes sense to go with kind of one of the best in the business because you know what you're going to get out of it. It's not, you know, your launch isn't going to be ruined by a OEM that doesn't know what they're doing. And I'm not saying that Big Eye Designs doesn't know what they're doing, but it was their first knife and there was quality control issues. Mine came out pretty much perfect in terms of the grind is relatively even not 100% perfect, but better than a lot of the ones I saw complaining about it and overall pretty decent edge. The action on mine was also very smooth, which there was some complaints about it being gritty or almost unusable and having to take it apart and clean it out and re-oil it to get it to be a usable kind of action on there. And then I also saw people that got the backstop installed backwards and so there was no lanyard hole and they had to disassemble it and turn it around. And so kind of a minor issue there, but something that I don't think you would see with a Riot OEM to knife. And so the quality control just kind of missed the mark, maybe because it was their first knife, they didn't know exactly what to look for. And I lucked out in getting one of kind of the better examples out there, but there were a lot of people that were upset with that. <clears throat> Next, the price. They're pretty comparably priced, but 265 for the Peach Pirate knife, 295 at the most expensive version of the Kingpin but you're getting a lot more premium materials with the Kingpin, a lot better, more reliable OEM, and overall it feels like a more premium knife when you're kind of comparing the two in hand. So not the biggest deal in the world, but there is a price difference, or a pretty similar price, and one is clearly better than the other. The other thing was kind of the information that you got going into it, and so with the Peach Pirate knife, he posted a picture a day or two before that was in a pocket, you didn't have a lot of information. Even from the picture, you couldn't tell a lot about the knife or its design or really any of the features of it. They did answer a couple questions in the comment section. So you knew the steel and who OEM'd it, but that was about it going into launch. You didn't know the price, you didn't know really the design until about two hours before when you got a lot more pictures. And you had to go onto the website the moment of the drop, it, their listing wasn't there until you refresh the page at the time that it dropped. And so you had to make a quick decision because these are gonna sell out fast. And it really relied on that kind of fear of missing out factor. I made a decision that I was gonna buy it if it was under $300, it was, and so I went ahead and pulled the trigger. But for people who really wanted to kind of know more about the knife before making a decision, they didn't have time to. By the time you were done reading the listing, it was sold out. 
And so I know it sounds like I'm dumping on the Pizza Fire knife, but it was a little bit of a kind of disappointing experience there. I'm overall happy with the knife. Mine was well done and it's a fun knife, a fun first design and kind of an exclusive knife, which is really cool. But if I were to choose one or the other, if I could only have one, I would definitely choose the Kingpin 10 times out of 10. And so kind of going to the launch on the Kingpin, it was a pre-order available, then it launched regular, but through that you had a lot of information, tons of photos of them, all of the specs listed on the pre-order page. You did a podcast on YouTube, maybe some other podcast platforms as well, giving you <clears throat> information and backstory and everything you need to know whether or not you want to buy this knife. So maybe you're not into traditional knives or didn't like the design or whatever reason you don't buy it, but you were able to make an educated decision without kind of guessing on what you're gonna get, which is a nice thing. But the other thing is that there's really no fear of missing out here. He did the pre-order, tons of people got in on that. He did regular launches, international launches. And the reason I actually pushed this video up is if you're watching this on the day of launch, this is launching on Blade HQ tomorrow, February 10th at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And so it's pretty available. He's trying to get it in as many hands as possible and give you all of the information you need to make a decision, which I think is really nice because he's kind of a similar company. The beer bombs are very elusive. I've been trying for a year to get one, still don't have one. And he could have gone that same route and just kind of did a money grab, but he really did an homage to traditional knives that came out beautifully. It's a super elegant and well done knife. And it's something that got me excited about traditional knives, which is hard to do. And so really, really appreciate how not only handled the launch, but how well done this is, how well thought out and how much kind of he put into this launch. It doesn't feel like it was kind of a another product that he's releasing. It was very well thought out and it meant a lot to him. And you can kind of see that in the design, you can feel it. Whereas the Peach Pirate and I felt like, you know, especially after Big Eye Designs released their Kickstarter for their utility knife that has the exact same handle, it feels like it just kind of slapped a label onto a knife and released a knife. Still a cool knife, but just a very different experience from two very similar companies. And so for me, I would definitely 100% recommend this if you're into traditional knives or you want to get into traditional knives. If you're not, it's probably, you can skip it, but I really fell in love with this. It's one of my favorite knives that I've received in a very long time. And funnily enough, it came on the same day of another knife that I'm really, really impressed with and really enjoying. But it takes a lot for me to get super excited about a knife because I handle a lot of different knives and this was one that did that for me. And so if you're kind of on the fence about it, I would definitely recommend it. I know talking about it as positively as I'm talking about it, you're probably wondering, you know, I did buy this knife myself. I have no affiliation with Tom, with Blade HQ, not gonna have affiliate links for this or anything like that. I just really enjoyed it myself, wanted to share it before kind of that launch happened. So if you're on the fence, you can make that decision and really see it a little bit more close up. I'll kind of turn it around a few more times, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification button. And like I said, if you're watching this on the day of launch, you're interested, make sure to set an alarm so you can grab that at 10 a.m. Pacific on February 10th if you want to grab it. I'm sure it's going to restock at some point, but I'm also so wouldn't be surprised if it sells out within a couple days. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great one. Take care.